Who was that? C. Dante modding. Hey, C. Dante, how are you doing? That's a, yeah. You know what? I saw a video today. I saw the latest Shoddy Cast video, and they mentioned that you're uh, you're involved in their new project. You got too many projects going on. <laughs> we can hear the sub sound through your microphone. Yeah, that's because the the sub sound is playing over my um, laptop, so that I can hear it. How is Shoddycast nowadays? Well, they're doing some amazing projects. They've just released a new mod, but they're working on something pretty damned amazing. Hopefully he didn't see it. Still not a ban. Okay, let's find out what he did. What did he do? Let's ban him. Let's ban him. Oh, he's calling me ugly. Oh, I mentioned, I saw that. I didn't really care. But only from the microphone. Is that intentional? Um, um. Oh, no. Right. Somebody do a... Oh. Yeah. A bit of a... That's a... That's a... Right. Refresh. Probably need to redo the subregion on the alert box. Okay, I think you weren't getting the sub chat, and I've just realized the sub chat is now going to go right over Steve's face. I'm actually using my main logo page here to, to, to stream this. This is really a bad idea. I am going to so fail. Next time we stream, it's going to be such an epic fail. It's amazing. There we go. Now, I can't actually see the, the, the Twitch chat as comfortably as I'd like to. Let's see if I can. Will I port Dynavision for Skyrim Special Edition? I question whether that's really necessary. I mean, what, what, what's the point? Oh, God. I'm hearing myself in Twitch. Right, let's do pop out for that. And let's make some of the text bigger. Will you port your FNV armors to FO4? No. God, no. Uh, <laughs> You like the new Steve logo? Yeah, I've got a few of them now, actually. I've got a few. I've got uh, I got some some interesting designs. I am beginning to make a... Col oh, God. We got two alert boxes now. Okay. Icky Robot just subscribed. Thank you. Let's move the chat down one level so that the, the, oh, the announcements overlay it. And indeed, let's. Oh God, where, where, I'm wondering when the um, the tip al right tip alerter also needs to be on, doesn't it? Right, and that should be all the way at the top, so people can see it. I am I I'm just I'm I'm off the chart for. Uh, disorganized today oh god I'm, i don't even have dark mode on that are you kidding where's dark mode come on come on come on timestamps hide chat mod icons slow mode clear chat better tv settings please give me dark mode dark theme yay okay Right, I now have the chat open on my main window so I can actually read you. Gopher is a professional. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. 
we do seem to have two sub boxes. I'm, I'm trying to make you get twice the value for your sub. Um, why did you choose to make the Barry playthrough instead of a Skyrim Special Edition? Because Skyrim Special Edition doesn't have Nuka World as a raid? Okay, let's go back to the Dynavision Doff um, question first. Right, Dynavision for Special Edition would be problematic because the the game already has dynamic depth of field. So we'd have to disable that, then enable... I mean, I suppose there's no reason it wouldn't work if you turned... I'll tell you what. Let me look into that. Let me write that one down. Um, we've got Dynavision Special Edition. I I'll give it some thought. Maybe, maybe I can just port it across and just tell people to disable the normal depth of field. It just seems a little semi-pointless. Dynavision's got a lot more control than the special edition depth of field. For example, you can set it to focus a lot faster because, let's face it, the one in game for special edition is really slow and sluggish. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be... It, it's really one of those things that if, if I could do it, I suppose... I might even use it myself. However, what would be better is if I could actually tweak the the one that comes with the game. But I don't think I can. I do not think I can. I'll look into it, but I don't think I can. The thing is, with Dynavision, you can do things like have it go, um, go lower when you're in combat or when you're running. And you can't do that with you know, Dynavision. I mean, this was one of the big... Sorry, with uh, the game's depth of field. This is one of the big benefits of Dynavision. Dynavision allowed you to tweak all the settings, change, you know, in, in what circumstances you would have depth of field, whether or not it was a strong in interiors, all these sort of things. Things that were a little... Well, you just couldn't do in, say, an ENB. So I, I can see why people might want it, actually. Hmm... Right. Professional stream. Yes, definitely. Professional. Yeah, Nuka World in Skyrim would be pretty great. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. Unless he did it in his own time, which I doubt, considering he doesn't have any personal time these days. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to have to get some of that. Right. Let's... The save file was corrupted. Right, yeah, people are asking about the Steve save and um, SS uh, Skyrim Special Edition. Yeah, the Steve save was horribly mangled, actually. However, porting him across to Special Edition doesn't seem to have that problem. Of course, I lose all of the mods that were with him. Not that I even remember half the mods anyway. So, plus, some of the saves, I've, I, I don't actually have the latest save for him. I've lost quite a few saves. Um, so, the, I think the earliest I've got is somewhere shortly after the, what was it called? Blo uh, Blood, Blood Guard? Blood, uh, be, 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 be. Dawn Guard. Dawn Guard. Shortly after Dawn Guard, which was Chapter Three. Chapter Four wasn't very long. didn't Didn't actually go on very long. But I don't. I don't have any saves from that. Um, so I, I really no idea how possible that would be. So yeah. Well, that works, doesn't it? Tell Varney, just subscribe. That's a resub. Thank you very much. Messed too much with the carriages, actually. Yeah, I have a feeling um, the Steve save got broken by scenic carriages. There seems to be a lot of evidence to, to, to suggest that was the mod that ruined the save. And it's a small area near the... I can't remember where it is. It's in the southwest somewhere near Falkreath. There's a small area that's like a little uh, triangle. 
and if Steve entered that area, it would just simply crash to desktop every time. But I'm pretty sure that doesn't doesn't do that in special edition uh, because I think it actually kind of takes the save from its old format and copies across all the references, but doesn't necessarily copy some of the problem some of the stuff that was a problem uh, from the last one. I, I don't know for sure. So, but so yeah. We don't hear the sub sound on stream. You don't see, you don't hear it, but you see it, right? You see it, but you don't hear it. That's odd. Hmm. However, however, I actually have an itinerary, believe it or not. Yes, indeed. Some of the things we can hear it through the mic. There you go. It doesn't really matter too much, does it? Here is the first thing on my itinerary. Jack. The Jack Let's Play. A lot of people seem to be worried that he's never going to come back. I do intend to bring Jack back. The question is, what the hell to, to play with Jack? Because there's a lot of quest mods. There are a lot of quest mods. I mean... I don't want to finish the main quest with Jack because that does actually terminate the game unless you use a mod, I believe. Or did that... No, has that changed with one of the DLC? Did that change with one of the DLC? I don't remember. However, to be honest with you, Jack really, really doesn't want to take a side. So, so yeah, okay. So we've got things like um, Beyond Boulder Dome. That, that, has that been enhanced a little? Is Jack in Fallout 4 an option? Well, um, to start a whole new playthrough in Fallout 4 with a character that was Jack and somehow make it so that the story connects him there, it, possible. It had actually occurred to me because, of course, Fallout 4 is 20 years after the Mojave, but it would it would require some way of getting Jack back to basically level zero, level one. Um, and so we'd have to have another head injury. <laughs> Poor Jack. Um, Skyrim apotheosis. Yes, I saw. I saw um, some mention of that recently. But yes. Um, but yeah, there's someone else. Jean Clee said it. Um, Fallout Four. Jack uh, with the speech options. I, I think at the moment Fallout Four with Jack might be an issue. Does does Jack even work with the personality of Soul Survivor? I mean, this is the problem, isn't it? It's it's the dialogue. I I'd have to massively. There's no way I could put up with Frank's voice coming from Jack. I would have to use um, the mods that remove the dialogue. But he got shot in the head again. I mean, look, there's there's a lot of different ways of of, of making it so that Jack's back to basics. But you should get back to Minecraft. You haven't built anything in years. I've built two houses today with my kids. Um, there is an extended dialogue mod. Yes, I've started using it, but it doesn't actually extend the dialogue yet. Um, so, however, however, honestly, honestly, at the moment, I think Fallout New Vegas is still has a lot of quest mods. I, I think there's a dialogue mod which eliminates not all voices but mentions of Sean. Is there? See, that that might be worth looking into then. A dialogue mod. Here's the thing. I'm thinking the next playthrough of Fallout 4 should be sometime in the future. I think I finish the Raider. I finish the Raider side of things with Barry in Fallout uh, in Nuka World. And then I finally do a review of the DLC. Because I've not done that yet. I've not done my review of the DLC. Because I've not actually experienced it all. So get that out of the way. And then probably wait a while. And wait for a lot of new mods. For example, the one that reduces the mentions of Sean. And that sort of thing. Maybe changes the game to add speech checks. Because I've seen quite a lot of 
movement um, suggesting things like that might be on their way. And, you know, something, you know, plenty of mods like that are going to come out and maybe make Fallout 4 a little more, you know, the game it should have been. That might be, you know, a, a good, and especially with the mods like Live Another Life type thing where you start from somewhere else, maybe we could get Jack continuing on in, 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 in the wasteland and I could do an actual Minutemen playthrough because I've not done that side of things yet. Because I, I can't imagine Jack being the Brotherhood. Um, so I haven't done a Brotherhood ending yet. I mean, that's the other thing. I kind of want, want to do a Brotherhood playthrough. But I think I'll probably just do that for myself because honestly, I can't see there being much more entertainment in in another Fallout 4 playthrough. Even the Barry playthrough, you'll notice I'm cutting far more than I would normally cut. You'll notice it in the next few episodes, actually. I I cut quite a lot of the busy work. So it's it's going to be a far shorter chapter than the Nuka World chapter was with Frank, even though there should be some extra stuff that I haven't done. Or if it's the same length as the, uh, the Frank playthrough, it'll be because I've got all this new stuff, but the stuff that's a repeat of the stuff Frank did, I'll, I'll be cutting. So... But yeah, I mean, I, I, I think a, a Fallout 4 Brotherhood playthrough, I did plan on doing one on the PlayStation, and I did have a character um, thought out for it. it was, I, was, I was actually going to try and melee that and go Brotherhood, almost like a kind of knight paladin type thing, but not a very nice one. Um, and yeah, so... trying to read this. Have I played Dishonored 2 on your own? No, I've not. I am, so yeah, so right, I'm, who was that subbing? Do, uh, who was this? That was Beowulf. Thank you very much. So yeah, um, like what was I was saying, I'm trying, to, I'm trying my best, I'm trying my best to follow everything here. So yeah, right. Brotherhood playthrough in Fallout 4 is an option, but I, I think I'd do that for myself. A Minuteman playthrough, as inside with a Minuteman, bring back Jack. But I think we're looking at a few years, I think. I think Fallout 4 is going to get more and more mods that make a, a good playthrough worth doing. But I think Jack has still got plenty of life. We've we've got Beyond Boulder Dome, but aren't there loads of others? What's it? Is it called Frontier? Is That's not a whole new... That's that's an actual place that Jack can go to. Frontier, isn't it? Is it? I can't remember what it's called. Frontier. Eisenklop beer. Thank you very much. Okay, no, do do me a favor, guys. I don't want to talk about other games yet. Uh, I've got a, I've got a list. Lonesome Road still haven't done. I could do Lonesome Road, the the world's quickest and most annoying playthrough. Uh, any fans of that DLC will be absolutely encouraged to skip my playthrough of that DLC uh, because um, Jack's personality in that place will. Uh, Shall we say offend fans of that DLC? Yes, let's say that. We'll offend them. <laughs> and it would be short. Um, <laughs> so, we, we, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What, what, what else is there? Frontier's a big mod. So Frontier is one that I could take Jack to. Yeah, I might do it just for the for the lols. I might do the Lonesome Road just for the lols. However, um, Grizzenfall, thank you very much for the resub. There's got to be more quest mods. I, I, when I list Frontier Story Mod, I'm not totally sure. I, I list the quest mods. I, I see a ton of them. 
a ton of them. In for Fronter, you need to be NCR aligned. Do you need to have finished the, the the main quest on the NCR side to do it though? Because Jack is actually aligned with the NCR if you look at his factions. It's not ready yet. Frontier is not ready yet. Um, because I know there's there's the new California one, isn't there? There's, and there's something called Cascadia, but I think Cascadia is a totally different um, game. Yeah, I saw the Some Guy epilogue mod, but honestly, it looks kind of like a... Uh, I, I'd enjoy it a little bit, but I don't think it would make a very good Let's Play, because it looks like he's gone total overboard on the difficulty, and his mods were already insanely difficulty with the mods I'm using, and I'm not uninstalling any mods. So I have a feeling it would be a lot of just mindless... Yeah, Cascadia. Cascadia is a totally new campaign, though, right? Sweet revenge. Randall wants it. Randall's got it. The Rockwell Pursuit. Okay, I will look that one up. Yeah, Project Brazil. Fallout New California is a totally new campaign as well. Okay. Um, I'm writing all this down, believe it or not. I'm quite tempted to do more uh, Fallout New Vegas Let's Plays with a new character. God knows what that character would be. Um, so, I don't think we made it a hard requirement. Okay, well, well look, look, it's... Take Jack to Fallout 3 Tales of the Wasteland. I think if I got Fallout 3 Tales of Two Wastelands back up and running, I'd probably want to do continue the will playthrough, if anything. Someone is creating Fallout New Vegas with the Fallout 4 engine, by the way. I, I do know that. Uh, but let's face it, this is going to be like Sky Oblivion or Skywind. It's probably something we're not going to see until 2020 or something. Rockwell Pursuit has its fans, but unfortunately it might be a bit rough if not unvoiced. Okay. Yeah, Tell the Two Wastelands is an option. Bring back Will. But War Trash. Okay. If you want a new character, you should use Fallout New California since the story has a new beginning. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I don't mind doing some new playthroughs of Fallout New Vegas with a new character. However, um, yeah... What I might have to do is get a list of uh, quest mods and put them up there and get people to discuss them. So, let's have a... Actually, you know what? Gardens of Equestria. Oddly enough... Wait, look, give me a second. Equestria. I saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2 yesterday. Odd. Just made me think of that. Um, Tales of New Reno. Barry's twin brother out in Vegas. <laughs> right, Legion playthrough New Vegas. Legion playthrough is the one thing I don't think I can ever do. I, I, I've done, I came, no, I've actually done one. I've done one, but I don't think I'd role play it long enough. Um, because it requires you to embrace the whole slavery thing. And it's just short term in a minor way. I mean, Barry, Barry's got 
people who are enslaved. And he's, he's, he sort of rationalizes it internally. Uh, but with the Legion, they, 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 the, the thing is with the Legion is they're not stereotypically evil. They're cartoonishly evil. You know, um, realistic evil, realistic evil is like uh, Mr. House. You know, that's that would be realistically evil, completely self-serving, callous, genocidal, uh, you know, treating humans as resources. The I, I quite like those sort of evil playthroughs because it's very I, I find evil characters a lot easier to play if they can rationalize their evil behavior, because that's normal. That's how, you know, that's how it's. Wait, I thought House was the good ending? Dude, House is the, I don't know what you'd call it, fascist ending? The closest you could get to the, I, I know, Nazi ending or something? He's hes a callous, genocidal, power-mad, egomaniac. I mean, House is not good. House is evil. At least, he's evil as I would classify him. Um, there are there are actually very few good endings in Fallout New Vegas. NCR's the closest to a potential good ending. Um, House is better than the Legion, probably. Although I've seen people argue, I've seen people argue otherwise. I've seen people argue that the Legion would be long term better for the Wasteland. I see it, but I don't. I don't. I don't really get it. Um, the house ending is a stable ending. It's all about stability, less freedoms, but more safety. But it is also the genocidal ending. You do have to wipe out the Brotherhood. Um, everyone, all of them, men, women, children, the lot, you wipe them out. Let's not forget that. That is... A fairly huge thing. What's wrong with the independent ending? There is no independent ending. Uh, the Yes Man ending is what we call the Suckers ending. You think it's the independent ending, but of course it ends with the Yes Man suggesting he's now in control. <laughs> You've been had. Um, so it's the Suckers ending. The Yes Man ending is specifically why I came up with Jack's small character flaw when it comes to robots. It was because I knew that ending would appeal to Jack otherwise. I made it so Jack did not trust robots to avoid the Yes Man ending. <laughs> to make it so that there's no ending that Jack would like. There is no ending that Jack would like. The NCR are too bureaucratic. Um, so although he doesn't mind them, they, he doesn't sort of like the way they do things. House is just, you know, a megalomaniac and has tons of robots. Yes, man, total mistrust of. And of course, I also added the, the character trait, totally despises slavery. So I actually made all four endings something Jack would avoid like the plague. What's the good ending of Fallout 4, then? From what I can gather, the closest you'd get to a good ending would be the Minuteman ending. However. I think, I think the good ending in Fallout 4 is the Minuteman ending. It's the only one where, where you can get... I think you, I think you can make it so that nobody, nobody... You don't have to wipe anyone out. You think the Minuteman one is canon? Probably, actually, I would. I mean, I've not done it yet. I've just I've heard that you can play it in such a way that you don't have to. That it's called the pe yeah the peaceful Minutemen ending. Uh, again, don't quite know how to do it, although I suspect I can figure that one out. Um, the railroad ending is probably closer to a good ending than the Brotherhood or the Institute. The Institute, to me, is the more obvious um, bad. Here's the thing, though. I, one of the things I quite like about the Fallout 4 endings, in, in, a, in a weird way, is there's no obviously caricature evil ending. 
And that's the thing in New Vegas with the with the Legion. One of the things I don't like about the Legion in New Vegas is they caricatured evil. They made evil the sort of like, you know, do you remember when you used to play D&D, when, back when you were a kid? You played D&D um, and you had alignments and you always had that one kid that thought chaotic evil was was the cackling maniac who liked to torture frogs or something. Um, you know, the t t e evil was this sort of like, <laughs> I will kill you because uh, it's fun kind of thing and, and just cackle away. Uh, the the Legion felt like that. It felt a bit like that. And I'm not saying there aren't people like that in the world. There are. But they tend to be fleeting. They tend to crop up and then disappear. They tend to... Here's the thing. When you spoke to Caesar, you got the feeling he wasn't quite like that. Caesar, I actually think, was well done. I think Caesar was well done. He himself felt rational. But all of the legionnaires I met didn't. They just seemed a bit too... You remember that one that you interrogated? What a... Yeah. And and if you actually play the Legion playthrough, you just you get this feeling of caricature evil. Institute isn't evil if you don't consider synths to be human. Well, you know, I mean I would consider them evil even if you d uh, don't consider synths to be sentient. Um I I, I think the the Institute is massively self-serving and, you know, it does whatever it wants to do to the people of the Commonwealth and everyone else, the Brotherhood, the Minutemen, whoever it is, anyone who's in their way, they will wipe out. They will take whatever those people have. If there's a scientist out there that they think could help them, they will kidnap him. If there's a resource out there that someone else has and they want, they will take it. They are, they may be well dressed, but they're the Negan um, faction. Um, so they are, they're not, they're not, they're evil. And I mean, I mean, that's not even counting all the things you find out they've done. I mean, you could, you could rationalize it to yourself and say, well, I'm not going to do all of those things they did. Um, I'm going to change this. I'm going to use these tapes and shame people and make them do. Um, I think scientists can choose to join or not. <laughs> huh? No. <laughs> yeah, they can choose. Yeah, they, they could choose to unlock the door and come peacefully. <laughs> or they could choose to lock the door and have us break it down and take them regardless. <laughs> oh, dear. So, but as I said, they're not caricature evil. They're not, ca but the same is true of the, the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood are not caricature evil. They've got a sense of honor to them and they do have a sort of purpose. But, um, you know, of course, they don't see ghouls as people. So there's that. They don't see super mutants as even the night, even the friendly ones as um, people. They, in fact, let's face it. Let's face it. We know what they represent in in this game. It's not just the fact that they don't see synths as people. They don't see anyone who isn't like them as people, and they view everyone who isn't part of their club as inferior and not worthy of having technology. So they go around and they will take technology from people who have it because they're not part of the Brotherhood. So the Brotherhood is lawful evil. This is one of the reasons I don't really like the whole alignment system in Dungeons and Dragons. This is why I preferred uh, games that didn't have alignments. They could you could make far more you could find make far more realistic personalities. Do they not consider ghouls as human as synths? No, they don't. They don't consider ghouls as human. It depends who you talk to. This is the great thing with the Brotherhood. And again, this is where I actually think uh, the Bethesda did a good job in this. They, they didn't make 
the Brotherhood cackling evil, and they certainly didn't make the people in the Brotherhood evil. You uh, you actually end up reading the logs of certain people that are in the Brotherhood, and you find a lot of them have problems with the way the Brotherhood um, is being run. A lot of them have problems with the racism. And it's it's a constant struggle for many of them. And I liked that. I loved the fact that when I sided with the railroad, I felt awful about having to go into combat with Dance and the other members of the Brotherhood that you got to know, especially the ones that, that you quite liked. The ones who did actually seem to think that perhaps the Brotherhood aren't, were going too far and weren't good. So I, I, I think Fallout 4 had some good writing in it. It's just, unfortunately, it was buried um, among a very linear and um, non-replayable story. I mean, there was also plenty of bad writing as well. So... So, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's... it's I... Brotherhood represents a nation trapped by dogma... Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's there's a, there's a lot of subtle evils in Fallout Four. There's a lot of subtle, e even the Minutemen. When you go the Minutemen and you have your own settlements, you, if you listen to some of your settlers, they're very, very anti-synth. They're very, very anti-synth. So they they're mistrusting even of you know. So I mean, there's and the thing is, is they've got some reason to be mistrustful but a lot of it comes out is this kind of feeling of slight racism but again but they don't seem to have that kind of uh, anti-ghoul racism so e even there there's the little shades coming in little little tweaks that they put in just so they didn't make anyone absolutely pure good and the railroad i mean the railroad are fundamentally flawed Bad writing, a ghoul child. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, you know, well, how do we get in there? Um, anyway, cutting this conversation short, I can see me one day maybe, maybe taking Jack to the, 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 the Commonwealth, but it would have to be so damned modded the game would have to have the game would have to have been almost redone. Now I do know Fallout New Vegas is coming out and Fallout 3 is being made for the the Fallout 4 engine. However, let's just totally and utterly go for you sided with the railroad. Don't you think that they are hypocritical since they protect synths and they are alive? but they kill with no hesitation humans like the Institute people. I didn't side with the ra railroad. Frank sided with the railroad. Uh, but are they hypocritical? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't think hypocritical is the right word. Um, they're protecting synths um, and to give them freedom. But, you know, I mean, plenty of people kill other people to ensure freedom. I mean, you do know the railroad is based upon a, a real a real body of people that freed black people in the in a, in America back in the time of slavery, right? They're based upon a real, and my guess is those people actually did some stuff that would be considered, you know, bad by the people at the time. I, I don't I don't know the history exactly, but. Would it be evil of somebody in the original railroad to have, say, shot or killed a white master to free a black slave? Would that have been hypocritical? You know, we're going to free a black slave by shooting the white master. Would that be hypocritical? I don't think it's hypocritical. You, I, I, you can argue the morality of it, but saying it's hypocritical is just, I think, I think it's kind of missing, missing the point of the railroad. They're not about saving lives. They're about freedom. Um, so let's, anyway, what I am, but anyway, for Jack, for Jack, what I think I might do is I might make another video then and suggest some of the, 
Let's have a look. Because we can we can browse files, select some of the quest mods and see what people think. Br categories, categories. The problem with the railroad is really whether synths are people. If synths are not people, the whole reason falls apart. True, but the the same argument can be made against, you know, white and black people. I mean, if black people are not really people, you know, is it wrong to keep them as slaves? And if that sentence doesn't make you go, what? Then, you know, but that's the sort of argument that was being made. Remember that back at the time. You know, this, these were the kind of arguments that were being made. So, and now we're delving into territories of, well, what does it mean to be self-aware? What does it mean to be sentient? Um, how do we even know whether somebody is self-aware? How do we know that people of a different ethnicity have the same sense of self that we do? Maybe they just mimic it. How do you know everyone you meet has self-awareness? How do you know the person you sitting next to you, the person you're listening to right now is actually self-aware? Maybe you're the only self-aware person on the planet and the rest of us are just meatbags that are going through some sort of instinctive program. You're special. You're the one who's leaped the gap and become self-aware, but it's just you. It's only you. We're all faking it. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? it go, we're going into the whole nature of what it means to be self-aware. So, the simulation. You need to put on your tinfoil hat. No, it's not. It's, these, this is the shades of Star Trek. Yeah. I, I am the only one I know is self-aware. I have to choose to believe everyone else is. Right, Rock Mage said it, right? So this is, it comes down to it. I'm self-aware, I think. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? But I am. Let's just say what I perceive as self-awareness, I know I'm self-aware. Therefore, I am going to assume other human beings are self-aware. I just am. I'm going to assume that other people are because I don't see why they wouldn't. But I tend to also assume dogs are self-aware as well. Because why wouldn't I? They may be different to, to me. And they may not be able to think the same way I think. But surely they're self-aware in a different kind of way. They seem to show that. But it's it's tough to know. Do 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 I do? Am I right to assume dogs are self-aware? You know, it's what what about other apes? What about other hominids? Our closest uh, relatives, chimpanzees, are they self-aware? When is is self-aware something that that that, that required a a higher brain function, or is a pigeon self-aware as well? And if you have an AI that actually has, you know, can think faster, think quicker, think more complex thoughts than we, how would we know if it was self-aware? How would we know? The biggest problem I had with the railroad uh, story was the fact that they wiped synths' minds and replaced them with a new personality. Because in my opinion, that's killing them. <laughs> that's killing someone. You've replaced them with a new person. People are not their bodies. People are their minds. They are their brains. It's basically if the individual can identify itself in a mirror. So if you get, if you get an AI that can identify itself in a mirror, is it self-aware, Unctium? Unctium? See, not everyone would agree with that. I mean, in the end, there's the other problem. It's really hard to nail down what it means to be self-aware in a way that can be defined or measured. Or at least in a way that wouldn't preclude certain AIs we already have. And, and here's the other thing. There are people who could not recognize themselves in a mirror. There are people who suffer um, a, a problem with their brain where they can't recognize faces. They cannot recognize faces. So they would look in a mirror and not know if it was them or it was someone else looking through a, a plane of glass. Are they not human? Are they not self-aware just because they have this problem? The AI has no concept of itself. How do you know? If the AI turns around to you, and says, no, no, I'm, I'm self-aware and I don't want to die. 
Is it just following its programming? Or is it actually self-aware? Oh, and here's, here's a better question. How do we know the difference between humans doing that? When a human says they're self-aware, are they just following some biological programming? What about blind people? They can't see themselves in a mirror, mirror either. Again, there you go. There's so many exceptions. And so you end up having to come up with a, a way to define self-awareness that really becomes impossible to test. Mammals' intelligence comes from the evolution of our central nervous system as opposed to an iterating intelligence. And so what? How does that lead to self-awareness? How does evolution versus it, uh, iterating intelligence lead to self-awareness? What's so special about that process that produces self-awareness that the, the, the other process doesn't? Human self-awareness is our pattern recognition system. Computers have past pattern recognition systems, sometimes more complicated than ours, and can recognize themselves. Again, you guys, honestly, I swear, I swear, you can keep throwing, a, you can keep throwing examples at me till doomsday, and I'll find flaws with every single one of them. And the reason I know this is because experts in the field can't come up with a definition. They cannot come up with something that is absolutely quantifiable, that is testable, um, it, that, that could test and provably show self-awareness because self-awareness is not something we can objectively um, highlight, objectively test, objectively even define. We can't do it. I will never know for sure if you are self-aware. I just, I will never know. I can come up with a definition and I can say, if you do this, I will accept that you are self-aware. But I can never know if you actually feel the way I feel. It's the same way as I, I can never know if you see the colour red the same way I see the colour red. We all think we see things the same, but how would you know? How, how do I know that your brain interprets red and it looks the same as it looks to me? I can't. I can never know that. <laughs> so it's 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 one of these things where I I mean, I, I I'm not going to use the word um, faith here, but there, there there comes a point where you just have to make some sort of arbitrary leap and say, okay. I'm going to say if it's human, it's got self-awareness. If it's not, it doesn't have self-awareness. Dogs are not self-aware. I can torture a dog, and it really doesn't mean anything. Um, my computer is not self-aware. I can trash it. It doesn't really mean anything. I, you, you make this decision. You make the distinction, and you base it upon a variety of things coming from how you were brought up, down to how you feel. If you like dogs, chances are you probably think they're self-aware. You probably think they're self-aware. If you hate dogs and think they're a blight on the planet, you're probably more tempted to think they're not self-aware. Funny how we do that as human beings, isn't it? Synths are probably people because they're made from human genes. And there's the other thing with th synths. Synth brains are identical to human brains. The only way you can tell them apart is they have a small synthetic part in them. But that can't be the part that does all the thinking. I feel that once emotion is expressed consciously, that means they're self-aware. Yeah, well, maybe. But again, again, it's all... It's, it's, we're going into Soma territory now. Anyway, you know what, guys? I, I, I can't have a long stream today because I really do have to get some work done. So, Jack. We've done Jack. I've got some suggestions. I will check them out. I'm looking at the quest and adventures. And, of course, New Vegas bounties. It's funny, isn't it? All some guys' uh, quests are right at the top. 
And we've got a few by Mike Hancho. So, oh, autumn leaves, for example. There's something called autumn leaves. Nipton rebuilt. Okay. The Rockwell Pursuit. Somebody has already suggested that. Badlands. The Rockwell Descent. Is that another one? Of the Rock... That's, that's the second Rockwell one. It's got to be. Okay, so yeah, right. So, overall... I, I've got some suggestions for, for for potential mods for Jack. Jack isn't coming back anytime soon. Don't be expecting this in the next month or so. Um, I just want to get in, in a heads up and start thinking ahead. So what else? What else uh, for playthroughs? Someone has asked me about Dishonored. Someone asked about Dishonored Two. Will I do a playthrough? That is one of the ones I do intend to try and get a playthrough done. But it will not be like my Dishonored playthrough. It will be a blind playthrough, and it will be one using powers. So I will do a t Dishonored 2 playthrough with powers. I'm not playing Dishonored 2 the first time without powers. I played My playthrough of Dishonored that's on my channel, it was a test. It was a challenge to see if I could finish the game without using any powers, if you remember. That was the entire point of it, because I thought you could. It turned out you can't. Although that... I think is not true. Apparently, somebody found a way to use gadgets, some of the gadgets. I think there's an exploding gadget that can actually make you jump. It damages you, but it jumps you higher. And you can actually use the exploding gadget or something to get up to the ledge that I did not get up to. Pillars of Eternity. Is, 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 that, a, is, is that a quest in Dishonored 2? New Stalker. Is that another quest in Dishonored 2? Vampire? What's that got to do with Dishonored 2? Yeah, yes. Yeah, right. You can use a grenade or something to climb the tower. So anyway, yeah, that's it. You, apparently, I could have finished that Let's Play had I thought of that. So, I failed. I totally and utterly failed. Pillar of Eternity is a game. Okay, and what does it have to do with Dishonored 2? Divinity Original Sin. Again, not Dishonored 2. This is going to be... I don't actually have that long, guys. So if we can't stick to this itinerary at all, I'm probably not going... There's, there's, just, there's no point in doing this. <laughs> Dishonored 2, you can play through without using any powers if you wish. I'm sure you can, but the question is... The question is, isn't that missing half of the point of a Dishonored 2? to play through when you first play it. Surely, the first time you play Dishonored 2, you, you want to experience the things that made it Dishonored 2. I mean, my Dishonored playthrough, I think, was probably more entertaining because I didn't use powers. But it didn't feel like Dishonored 2. It felt like something like Thief in a Dishonored world, if that makes sense. So, if you're going to do a first playthrough of Dishonored 2 without any powers, you're daft. Well, I'm not sure I'm dis daft. I'm, 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 I'm guessing. I'm, I'm guessing it's perfectly playable. But it sounds like the sort of playthrough you do afterwards as a challenge. You see, that's what I'm thinking. My only big problem with doing a blind playthrough of Dishonored 2 is if it's anything like Dishonored 1. It's trivially easy. Dishonored 1 had some powers that kind of, I don't know, re remove the need for stealth, if that makes sense. Like, you could see where everyone was and... You know, you could, you could, you could definitely see. You could see where people were looking, where they were patrolling, and then you could blink past them. It was there was almost no need to, to, to play like a stealth game, which I thought was unfortunate in a way. So yeah, I mean, the, the other thing to do is do do Dishonored 2 and do it as a more aggressive playthrough. 
do is do a more aggressive playthrough with a lot of powers, and then maybe I can do a stealth playthrough another day. All right, Dishonored Two. So that's a potential. That's a potential. All right. Dishonored Two can be a lot more unfair. All right. Okay. It might be best if a player's female. Well, I think the thing is there is it, there's two there's two characters, isn't there? You really should probably play the game twice, right? <laughs> once once as Corvo, once as is it Emily or Amelia or something like that? Once as once as the, each character, and then do a stealth playthrough. Yeah, to be honest with you though, I think I only want to do one playthrough. I'll probably do a Corvo playthrough, probably do a Corvo playthrough and then do that. And then the rest I'll just do in my spare time. Now, they have different powers, yeah. Yeah, there's no difference between the uh, playthroughs, just the powers. Right, that's that's it. So I'd probably just do it for fun in my own time. However, talking about things to play for fun, one thing that did come up as a possible playthrough was Evil Within and Evil Within 2. But some people have suggested Evil Within 1 is not that good or not good enough for a Let's Play. So I don't know about that. I don't know about that. One one option there was to play Evil Within as a stream and then Evil Within 2 as a let's play. I don't I actually don't know. Everyone a lot of people are saying this. A lot of people are saying Evil Within is good, but Evil Within sorry, Evil Within 2 is is good, but Evil Within 1 wasn't. Um but I, I generally prefer to play both games. So if it's just, if it's, if it's, well, Evil Within, I've actually heard people like the first one better. Okay, so, so then if I was going to do Evil Within, I should probably do one and two as a let's play. I, I, I suspect, though, those games are actually a bit longer. Well, I've also been told Evil Within 2 stands on its own, that it does a good job of explaining the first game well enough. So, you played Witcher 1, so. True, if it's like that, if it's just that Evil Within 1 was clumsier than Evil Within 2, then, then I'll play, I'd play through it. Um, again, probably what will happen is nearer the time when I'm thinking of doing these, I might make single videos and get a lot more... A lot of people who I've got very um, specific ideas of what they want to do. Uh, I don't want to discuss play uh, Let's Plays anymore because, f to be honest with you, I I've still got, as I said, we've got Evil Within, we've got Fallout New Vegas, possibly Dishonored, and I've still got two playthroughs on the go at the moment. So there won't be anything else. There's not going to be not going to be time to, to add other playthroughs in between. If I was going to do anything, I'd be thinking about doing something like small, very, very small horror movies like, there's a game called, I think it's Observer? I think it's Observer. It's by a team I've played a game before. There's also things like The Long Dark, but The Long Dark, I don't know, but that looks almost like it should be a stream, but apparently there is a story mode. So yeah, I'm thinking of Observer. I'm thinking it's probably a it's probably a short one. Then I need I need a few of those. I need a few of those. I think. Have I ever done the Dead Space trilogy? Yes, I have. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah, it was Layers of Fear development team. So, you know, it's... Uh, we're talking about the Near Dark is a survival game, but it's short. Okay. The, is, 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 is... When it was, sorry. Um, what was it called? The Long the long Dark. The Long Dark has kind of gone downhill with the story. It's a long game in story mode. Oh, okay. Okay, so Long, long Dark possible stream... 
Although I suspect I've got things like Don't Starve and The Forest for streams with Che, and that's probably going to be too much of the same thing. So maybe not a good idea. Okay. Other things for stream. Warframe. I'm probably not going to stream this, but I definitely still need to do some Eidolon hunting. I need to do some Eidolon hunting. I've not done a successful... I've only done one attempt. did it on stream. I probably won't stream it. My, my Warframe streams never seem to be particularly um, popular. So I probably won't. And I can see why. It's just me with three guys doing some fairly grindy stuff. So, yeah. Shadow of War, I may do a quick test stream. The same way as I did with Wolfenstein. I don't think... Sh sorry, Shadow of Mordor... No, Shadow of, Shadow of War was right. I don't think Shadow of War is a game I'd let's play or even stream very often. I think it's like Wolfenstein. I'll stream it first time, get some first impressions, have a bit of a laugh, and then play it for myself in, in, in the background. In the background. Uh, in downtime. I say that as though I have much downtime. I've not played Wolfenstein 2 since the lot since the stream believe it or not so shadow of loot boxes yes apparently so apparently my worries about it being balanced for loot boxes were correct everyone's saying that the uh, the last act is essentially there to make you pay money which sounds fairly awful i i must admit i'm not excited I'm not excited to play that, but I kind of want to play it. I really did enjoy the first one. I kind of, I want to give it its own shot and get it at least to the first ending. Gopher can't play KSP. He doesn't do Immortals and doesn't do Reverts. I did play KSP. <laughs> we had some fun. <laughs> but yes, I don't do Reverts. KSP without reverts can't be done. Then it shall not be played. <laughs> uh, right. So, okay. Um, then the last thing on the streaming itinerary at the moment. Oh, I'm going to release Don't Star Episode 1 tonight. That was me and Che. We're going to be carrying on on Che's channel on Tuesdays. Um, so, I wonder if I can, give me a second, I just want to, I just want to see if I've got this somewhere. Yes, I've moments of silence. Great streaming, that is, isn't it? I'm trying to find something. I am trying to find something. Um, let's have a look. Is that... Yeah, there it is. Okay. I'm just trying to show you something. <laughs> okay, let's focus on the H drive. There you go. <laughs> oh, let's hope that comes through. So that will be released later today. <laughs> Come on, tell me, tell me how cool that is. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So there you go. Um, that's going to that is going to be that is going to be up there tonight. So keep your eyes open for that. That's going to be that's going to be on Tuesdays 
live on Che's channel. But for my channel, what I am thinking for live streaming, I, I, maybe next Sunday, but it might be too short notice, but a return to XCOM 2, because XCOM 2 has got DLC now. I'm thinking of buying the DLC and trying a whole new playthrough, probably the same difficulty, because I'm going to be, um, it's, I can't remember how to play. <laughs> XCOM 2. That's what I'm thinking. Next Sunday. So that will be the Sunday streams from now on. I, I almost was tempted to try and get it done this week, but I didn't want to, I did not want to, I did not want to uh, rush it. It's called War of the Chosen. Right, okay, so there you go. That's that's what I'm thinking. That is what I'm thinking. I've even got, I've even got a new version. I've got a high-res version of the logo ready for it. You remember the logo we used? The tiny little one. I tried to find the person who made that one, but I got, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get in contact with them. But I've managed to get one that's way higher resolution made. So I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Needs an announcement. It will have an announcement. There will be an announcement. There will be an announcement. Where do we submit our characters? Now, this is the thing. I don't even know. I don't even know how, how we should do this because last time it was a bit of a pain in the backside getting players in the in the character pool. So I, I, I don't know how to do it. I do not know. Right. So, so yeah, I, honestly, I don't know how to do it. I don't know the best way to do it. I need to talk to someone um, and try and get... The thing is, one of the things I didn't like about the character pool was the fact that very often the person getting pulled in as a soldier wasn't from the, from the current stream. And I miss that a tiny bit. I do miss that a little bit. So as much as I liked, as much as I liked the idea of importing people that way, I'm not sure I want to do it the same way. I kind of I, I don't know. It's if I could if I could have a character pool that was just people who were in the stream right now. People who are in the stream right now, then that would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome. But we just we just we don't seem to be able to get that. So Sub only raffle. That might be it. We might do a sub only raffle. Uh, sub only raffle, and then just rename the character, and then that person can submit, like we used to. We used to do it that way. We used to do. I I put everything in. They just told me what they wanted to put. It felt more personal. Does that make any? Does that make sense? Rename the soldiers on spot. Details like face and clothes, uh, I can update off. So no patrons then. Ugh. See, the problem is, the problem with doing this is there was, it, it took quite a lot of time getting backwards and forwards and picking these. But more importantly, it just seemed, it seemed a lot less personal. It seemed a lot less personal. So I've got some other ideas of um, how to reward the patrons. I'm the, I'm dealing. I'm I'm sending messages to the patrons regarding other things, uh, but you know, the thing is, we I've got patrons who, who, who patronise me, <laughs> and I've got subscribers who are subscribed, and trying to connect them together at the same time was not as easy as it sounded. And it didn't feel as um, personal. There's, I just, I liked, I liked putting people who were in the, the chat there and then, because then it'd be like, "Yay, I got in! I'm gonna die," sort of thing. I liked that. I liked that. I think I would, I would prefer to give the patrons something else that was that was more appropriate. Because I mean, a lot of them say, "Oh yeah, I'll be a soldier," but they never actually turn up. They never watch and they don't really 
care too much. It's kind of, you know, it's, I, I sort of, I think I'd rather give them something that they would actually care for. A red t-shirt. <laughs> oh, dear. That's what we should do, shouldn't we? Should like, if, uh, if, if, uh, if there's, um, if whoever, whoever um, dies in the, in the stream should uh, get a special red t-shirt. I volunteered and died. <laughs> I was a volunteer. <laughs> this is not XCOM. This is Dark Souls. So, but yeah, I'm I'm I am open to suggestions on how we do the soldiers, though. But we could open a Discord channel only for subs and patrons when a new character is needed, then draw from someone who typed in there at the time. That's another option. I'm wondering if Discord has got raffles. Oh, I wouldn't do the customization live. Um, generally, what, what happened last time was I'd pick a name, I'd assign the soldier the name, and sometimes I might change the nationality, but, you know, I, I, would, I would do that, and then they would send details of what they wanted to be changed to. I think that doing it the way we did before is best. Which way? We've, we've done two different ways, you see. So, yeah, right. I, um, well, that's... We'll, we'll, we'll think on it. We will think on it. We will think on it. Um, the old way. You liked the old way. I miss shotgunning aliens in the face. Vinny Pop, hey, how you doing? Yeah. See, that's the thing. With, with, people, with people who were in the chat and, you know, they, they, they'd be there every single week. I ended up knowing them from their character. You know, Asteria Valens will will forever be my sniper. There's, it's, you know, it's there. There are just some characters when I think of them now, I think of the character they were. I want a flamethrower this time. <laughs> oh dear. Hello, Moon Song Stress. Yeah. So I I I miss those one hundred percent misses. Yay. Oh, do I remind you of strawberries? Yes, indeed. You see what I'm saying? There was, there was, there was something about it being people from the chat. I liked that. It was engaging with the people that were there at that moment. So, and ladies and gentlemen, I have only. Oh God, smashing my. If Drunk and Deadly is willing to handle it again, I'd suggest continuing the XCOM 2 approach. Well, like I, we've said, that just unfortunately... Have I missed... Has one of my chats frozen? I think one of my chats is frozen. Oh, no, it's not. There we go. I am, right, the, the other subject... The other subject is... OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. I'm using version 0 0.659, which is ancient. Absolutely ancient. And... Yeah, thanks, Wolfclaw. <laughs> Could bug me in the, um, in, the, in the Discord chat, mate. Um, I'm thinking of upgrading to OBS... I don't know what version it's at, like 20 or something now. The newest version, because it's got a lot of uh, new features. So I might be doing... The next stream might not be the XCOM stream. The, the next stream might actually be Gophers playing around with OBS, trying to get it working and doing stuff stream. So I might actually... I don't know for sure. I might pick a random game um, and just do something goof off and iron out the the technical difficulties. For, for XCOM, I want it to be smooth sailing. I want it to be absolutely... OBS, is it Studio? Open Broadcasting Studio? No, it's not. It's Open Broadcast Software. Oh, you mean it's OBS Studio is the actual... Okay, whatever. 
Oh, thank you for the sub, Vinny Pop. So, what was I talking about? OBS, yeah. Um, probably that's what I, I, I want the XCOM stream to be fairly smooth sailing, so there might be another stream before then. The reason for me upgrading is this. I can't even do things like add videos and stuff now on this. I did have a plugin that allowed me to do it, which is how I used to moo you all. Um, but, you know. Thumbs up. Do I like Prison Architect? Never played it. What an awful thought, really. I'm going to devise the perfect prison. <laughs> oh, dear. I played Dungeon... Dungeon Keeper, was it? Dungeon Architect? I, um, right. So, I think, ladies and gentlemen, that is everything on my list of stuff. The Moo! There's the Moo. Right, yes. And as someone reminded me, I do need to get some emotes made. I do need to talk to an emote specialist. Um, if an upgrade to the newest version brings back the moo, there's little to discuss. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got me, you got me. That is 99% of the reason I want to upgrade to OBS, okay? There was, there is another, the reason, part of the reason it got to me is, is I wanted to have a, an animated background while doing this talk today, and I just couldn't get it working. I was trying to use a movie to do an animated looped background and just could not get it working. Because I thought the new logo, I thought the new logo would look kind of awesome with uh, an animated background. But, you know. Because, you know. It's pretty awesome. It's, it's just... Oh. That didn't go exactly as I wanted it to go. Oh, okay. Oh, that's going to be hideous. Yes, that is. I don't suppose I can undo that. Next time we get a um, next time we get a, a sub, it's going to be fairly aggressive. No, I'm going to have to adjust that. <laughs> Where's my logo? New logo. There we go. No, come on. Boom. There we go. Yeah, I wanted an animated background to that. Transparent chat would work better. Yeah, um, let's see about that. If I do something like this and then... Yeah, I told you, I'm a professional. It's We want use color key, select, boom. You say it would work best, but... Um, would it really? <laughs> um, maybe there's a, maybe there's a way to blend it. Nope. Now, ah, well, not with this background. Yeah, it doesn't work well with this background, does it? Is semi-transparent an option? No, unfortunately not. I mean, I could do that. I could probably read it. <laughs> I can change the opacity, but it also changes the opacity of the text as well, so... Anyway, will I ever return to the Darkest Dungeon? Uh, I don't know. No idea. <laughs> no idea. Difficult to know for sure. Cake is good. I prefer the chat big and black, to be honest. And on that comment, that is almost certainly going to get the jokes. I think it's time to... Uh, have I ever considered modded Minecraft? Yes, but no time. Just no time. No time. 
Um, so, yes. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for this impromptu chat thing that has more viewers than whenever I play a game. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's telling me something. I'm just going to do streams from now on with the Steve logo. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Steve logo. In fact, I, I, I'll just, I will stream when I'm playing a game, um, but I won't show you the game. I'll just have the Steve logo up and I'll play the game in the background. Or maybe I'll put it up in a small window in the corner so you can see what I'm playing, but just ignore me, which is what most of you do when I play anyway. <laughs> this is actually the stream we don't care about the post stream game as usual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Go for loot boxes, microtransactions, pay to win, someone think of something. <laughs> nice try. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to go off and do some work. And by work, I actually mean get some more Barry sorted out. Yes, indeed. Oh, and before I do that, I am going to go and release the Don't Starve episode. Yes, I am. Okay, so join us on Tuesday over on Che's channel. I will make an announcement on Monday just to remind everyone, and hopefully the video going out today will give everyone a bit of a nudge. But it's on Che's channel. I will be recording it, but we will be streaming it live on his channel. So I will see you on Tuesday.